Okay, so I have a Rufus here. If I wanted to upgrade this weapon. Ooh. All right, all right. So this is the new way you upgrade stuff. It requires 12 spoils of conquest. I only have 14. Holy shit. 10,000 glimmer. 27 legendary shards. And enhancement course. 20. And this will enhance the weapon. Once this weapon is enhanced, this weapon will be granted weapon level, memento socket, obtain limited reshape options at the relic, and Morris on click. Enhancing will immediately replace this weapon's masterwork with an enhanced intrinsic that is aligned with the current masterwork stat. Oh, but you can, of course, change this. I would rather upgrade this. I got a high impact keep away roll. So let me upgrade this. Okay, this is interesting. Because I've already masterworked it, it's only costing me enhancement cores and spools of conquest. So let me go ahead and masterwork it. Or go ahead and enhance the weapon. It is now enhanced. Oh my. Requires weapon, weapon level 11. Interesting. So we now have to level the weapon up. Notice how this one has like the little, this little insignia here. And now look at this one. It's got like almost like a diamond insignia. Is it all the dead weapons? No, this is only applicable to raid a dead weapons. Um, for instance, look at this Astro Horizon. That's a dead. See, I can't do it to this one. Only applicable to to the raid, the current raid of dead weapons. This is something that are trying out right now, and they're going to extend this elsewhere. So, if we go here, guys, to the Trace Rifle that we just upgraded, boom. Now we have. The ability to reshape this this trace and notice that the traits are locked but at level seven we'll be able to unlock the ability to change out its mass work now keep in mind its mass work that it gave us the intrinsic that it gave us was based on the mass work that the weapon originally had but at level seven we'll be able to unlock this and change this out which can of course cost materials uh, we can change out two barrels right here, but level two, level three, level four, and so on and so forth will unlock all these different barrel perks. Uh, magazine perks are the same exact thing as well, guys. And and then here for the traits, I, I don't really know what the cost is going to be, but notice it says tier two enhancement require, tier three enhancement require. When we go to the weapon right now and we take a look at um, Acacia here, we see enhanced weapon. And this is the tier two enhancement. This costs one ascended alloy. And I'm assuming tier three is going to cost yet another ascended alloy. This is not cheap. My concern right now, we're going to have to go level the gun up and see. My concern is that this is going to cost one ascended alloy and then another ascended alloy for the enhanced version of this. I hope that's not the case. Surely that's not the case, Bungie. We're going to see. Now, some of you ask, can you put a memento on it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Matter of fact, let me just go over what this trace rifle looks with the different mementos. That's the gold. Ah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. No lie, the pink looks the best. But yeah, you could throw a memento on it, guys. You can go ahead and throw a memento on it now. Um, and you can even change up some of the different perks here. Uh, barrel perks. Maybe if I wanted to have... A bigger a bigger mag here oh whoa, whoa. glitching out a little bit enhanced mag um i could change this out and this would cost me glimmer it's always two enhancement alloys to fully to fully upgrade here's the thing though my question that i have is not whether or not it's going to cost two ascendant alloys my question is is it going to cost an extra ascendant alloy on top of what's been leveled so guys can we do something before we go any further because i want further clarity on this right here right now I want to level this weapon up to, to 11 right now. Oh, good spot. level 17 i mean right there we got we got a crap ton like almost 60 60 something percent all right so we're level 17 guys oh i'm gonna take us back to the enclave no reason for us to go to level 20 since masterwork does not actually unlock and we're gonna talk about that in a little more depth here let's go take a look at this thing guys we have finally leveled it up to level 17 which should be an 
a high enough level for both tiers with our adept weapon here and with each one of these tiers these enhancements um this is going to unlock the ability to unlock or enhance both of these traits so this is going to cost one ascended alloy let's go and purchase that right now so hold on, hold on actually before i start this mass work visuals will be disabled until both traits are enhanced this weapon's perks will be limited to one per column after reshaping all right so let's do that and then it's also going to be one more with tier three enhancements and again it still says the same thing mass revision will be disabled until both traits are enhanced this weapons perk will be limited to one per column after reshaping so another fifteen thousand glimmer three enhancement prisms and one alloy all right so that's the last enhancement you can do to the weapon right we come here to reshape we come here to reshape and there it is now the question that we had perfect my concern earlier when we spent these ascendant alloys was that not only was it going to charge us an ascendant alloy to initially enhance but whenever we came in here to slot in the traits it was also going to charge us that is not the case so guys we we go ahead and put this in perfect all right now let me let me look at this let's take a look there should be okay this is not showing up and this is this is something a lot of you were, were pointing out we're supposed to have the ability to change the mass work just like we have the ability to change the barrel perks and the mag perks and and stuff like that we're also supposed to this is not supposed to be locked even stated in the twab way back when and even stated here most recently we we're supposed to have the option to change out the master work so it is not giving us that option um you will still get the minor stab bumps at level 20 but we had somebody just come by the stream and said that they leveled their weapon up all the way to level 20 and the mass work still did not unlock so there's got to be something going on again this is something bungie has already said before that we will be able to change the only traits or the only thing that matters when it comes to getting a raid adept weapon is really the final traits everything else should be customizable so that what, what that means is you only need a two out of a five god roll for your adept weapon and then you're good and as far as like what I want on this role, this is going to be my PvP role. So I think I might do like a, pro a projection views and kind of leave it at that. Um, you can do mementos, guys. You can still apply all those things and you're good. Um, but it's interesting that the enhancement feature, the, the tier three enhancement, this enhan enhancement right here, this actually is taking the, I guess, the weapon crafting itself away from the weapon crafting table you just simply go here to apply things you're not actually going here to do the enhancing so you can do this wherever and with it being a depth weapon just like all of our other depth weapons you can put on different parts you can put on you know depth targeting or depth range i mean i can go ahead and max this out if i wanted to i can max out my stability especially considering stability has a 10 percent flinch resist at 100 stability so i can go over here and slot on that and just go ahead and max that out between both of those guys you can go back and forth and that's the beautiful thing now again what is better adept versus craft technically if you got the two traits the two best traits possible in that final column then i would take the adept because then you now have a weapon fully loaded with not only enhanced traits but an adept mod on top of that the thing that craftable weapons gives you though is you have the the fully customizable weapon it's rng protection over time right and also you also have the ability to change the masterwork until bungie fixes this and allows us to change the masterwork and i don't know if this is supposed to be replaced by the ability i don't know i don't know all, all i know is like inside of the crafting table we're we are supposed to have the ability to change the masterwork in some ways the craftable versions still have an edge but once that is fixed adepts clearly win guys adepts clearly win and you just have to get that two out of five god roll in order to have the perfect roll and i know there's a lot of comments like i i just see power creep again this is some budgie is is keeping to raid weapons we're gonna see how that plays out and uh and go from there the material requirements enhancement prisms ascended alloys but still one in one guys one in one for fully enhancing these let me ask y'all something just 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 talking here from what you've seen and the leveling process is still the same for an adept weapon as it would be for crafting a weapon from what you see here how do you feel about this 
It's good. Seems like a good thing to me. Keep in mind, hold on, before people jump up and say power creep, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you're 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 talking some potency out there with the right roll. Can you imagine one day us having the ability to get an immortal adept inside of trials and enhance those traits? Obviously, things could get busted very quickly. And so Bungie's being very selective about what they do this with starting with just our raid weapons with that being said though with that being said you still have to go through a lot of work you still have to do master mode raid which is not the funnest time you still got to get a a good roll in both of those last traits so it still has to be the perfect trait combination that you want and i don't know about your rng but my rng has not been good all right and third you still got to go through the leveling process all over again now luckily we were leveling the weapon up and with that being said it's still a long process it's still a commitment you know what i mean i don't know how many people would will go out of their way to do this what the way i look at it is you get a god roll like you see a, an adept weapon that's dropping maybe it's rufus or something like that or even this trace rifle and you go and do the encounters and you get such a juicy trait combination that you're just like damn i have got I have got to enhance these traits and slap on an adept mod and see this weapon to its fullest potential and you go out and level it up however if it if it does not have these two traits that are if it's not what you want i would i mean i would a thousand percent just keep the craftable version all day long all day long it would have to be a trait combination that's just super potent that i'm like damn i need to see this fully with you know an adept mod essentially now in some ways you're like yo why don't I just do the master mode version of the raid and completely bypass going for the craftable role? You could do that. However, keep in mind, metas change, guys. Metas change. And the beautiful thing about craftable weapons is when the meta changes, in some ways, you can change with it by having a weapon that's fully customizable. You know, you might be in a situation down the road where you want to change things out. Maybe target lock gets, you know, some significant nerf and you had an, an Acacia dejection with keep away and target lock but you had an adept role and you're like, damn, I wish I could be using something else, you know, or, or even, you know, high end back reserves. Maybe they got some change and you want to change that up. So, and again, the beautiful thing about a craftable weapon, you can go from PVE to PVP, right? It doesn't just lock it. Like this is obviously to me, a more of a PVP. Yeah, this is a PVP bro. And if I wanted to go run inside a PVE right now, I wouldn't be using this trace rifle. But if I had the crafter rule, I could change things out. But keep in mind, that's still not the easiest thing. Because changing weapon traits out, and especially enhanced weapon traits out from PvP to PvE or vice versa, is still costly. It's still costing you if you're enhancing every time, and it's sending alloy plus other materials. So it's not cheap, and it's not perfect. I still wish that craftable weapons had permanent unlocks. And I don't know if Bungie's ever going to give us that system because we've been asking for that for a year. It'd be nice. It would be nice. And that's the edge that craftable weapons can have over adept weapons, in my opinion. You could have the full customization. You can unlock traits permanently, but you won't have the, I guess, the complete package that you would with the adept version. Overall, I think this system, guys, is an interesting system. I'm curious to see where else Bungie expands this to. And I like it. I like seeing this weapon, this adept weapon with enhanced traits. It's sexy. It's a hell of a lot better than what they did with previous adept weapons from raids. There's literally no point. Um, I got like a, an, I got an adept insidious. No point. No point. Not whenever the craft will roll is, sub is substantially better. There's literally no point in even having it. All right. That's it, guys. Y'all have a good one. All right. See you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.